Aloha, my name is Martha Klopin and I started a series called Medicare Answers in Minutes and today it's time to take the deep dive into Medicare Part D. Part D is the part of Medicare that covers your prescription drugs and most people know very very little about exactly how the Medicare Part D plan is structured and it's very important to understand it well because when you're picking up certain types of medications your cost may be very little but if you have to pick up other types of drugs the cost can be very very expensive so to make sure that there are no surprises when you're at the pharmacy uh, it's a good idea to take the time to really look at how Medicare has structured this plan which is actually a very valuable plan when Medicare started in 1966 there was no Medicare Part D so if you needed a medication and you did not have coverage through an employer you had to rely on the benevolence of friends and family and sometimes friends and family could not help out so when Medicare started the prescription drug Part D in 2006 it was a very very beneficial program that helped millions and millions of Medicare beneficiaries. So I'm gonna need my glasses for this one because when it comes to Medicare Part D, uh, again, um, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of information that I'm going to cover with you today. So the first thing to know is that the drugs that are covered under Medicare Part D are approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. They include biological products as well as insulin. It also includes some supplies for the injection of insulin. Now, the reason I like to share that information is because some people are prescribed medications from their doctor that they can get over the counter. If you are prescribed an over the counter medication, then your prescription drug plan will not cover that. So very important to know that you only can pick up prescription drugs that your doctor has ordered if you know Medicare has approved them and the Food and Drug Administration has approved them as drugs. If they are now available over the counter, you will not be able to pick those up under your Part D prescription drug plan. Now the types of coverage that are, that's required when you have Medicare are in six protected categories. There are medications that cover cancer, HIV AIDS, antidepressants, antipsychotic, uh, immunosuppressants, and all commercially available vaccines. Now, especially in this new uh, season of this pandemic and COVID-19, when they come out with a vaccine, it's very important to understand that that could possibly be covered under your Medicare Part D uh, drug program because many people may be very interested in that vaccine. So all commercially available vaccines are covered under your Medicare Part D. And most compounded medications uh, are also covered. But if there is a medication that is not covered, um, you know, you would have to pay it out of pocket. So let's take a look at some of the drugs that are not covered under Part D. Some of the drugs that are excluded by law are drugs for anorexia, drugs for weight loss, or even drugs for weight gain. Sometimes people need help gaining weight and that would not be covered under Part D, not required to be covered under the Part D drug plan. Also, fertility drugs are not uh, covered. Also, drugs for cosmetic uh, purposes. Some people take medications to help them with hair loss and that would not be covered under their Medicare Part D. Also, many prescription vitamins and and mineral products are not covered. Uh, some people take magnesium, Part D, a lot of vitamin C, vitamin E, and it's important to know those are medications that you would expect um, to cover out of pocket because Medicare Part D right now does not cover those particular products. But what I will say is there are some insurance companies that offer what we call uh, benefits beyond original Medicare, and they will cover some of the over-the-counter counter medicines that uh, we're talking about today. So that's why it's very, very important to really understand what Medicare covers and what it doesn't cover. So if you are looking at a plan that does cover some of the over-the-counter medications or some of these medications that we talked about just now, um, you may have some coverage through one of the plans uh, for that. Now, all Medicare Part D drugs have what's called a formulary. 
A formulary is just another way of saying a list of medications. So it's very important to understand with Medicare, not all Medicare Part D plans have the same formulary. So that's why it's so important when you're looking at picking up a Medicare drug plan, it's very, very important that you take a look at that formulary or list of medications covered by that particular insurance program. Now, many of the insurance companies are required by law now to actually make that information available on their website. So you can go to their website and you can see an up-to-date listing of what is covered under your plan. If you do not have access, you should have a member identification card. That's the card that says you are a member of that plan and you can call the customer service department and you can tell them what drug you're looking for and make sure that that drug is covered. So it's very important to know not all drugs are covered by all insurance plans. Also, when it comes to Medicare Part D, the drugs are assigned tier levels, tier levels. That's what they call them, tier, T-I-E-R-S, not tiers, <laughs> which sometimes we want to cry when we see how much medication can cost. But tier levels, tier level one will be your lowest copayment, and those are the tiers for generic drugs. Tier level two drugs will be a little bit more expensive. Your tier threes are typically your brand drugs, and they will be even more expensive. So drugs can be priced differently based on the tier level that they are in. So very important, there's a lot of new terminology that you need to learn when you transition to Medicare or someone that you love and take care of has Medicare and tier levels would be one of them. So you wanna make sure that you understand tier levels. Tier levels four, five, and some insurance drug companies also have tier level six will be your most expensive drugs. And sometimes those drugs are what we call injectables and they are given at the hospital, doctor's office, or what is known as an infusion center. Those medications could be a few thousand dollars uh, per injection. So that's why, again, it's so important to understand exactly how your drug plan will work. Most cases, it works a lot differently than a plan that you may have had when you were working and covered under a commercial or employer plan. So that's why it's so important to get familiar with the terms once you transition to Medicare insurance. Now, plans can change their categories and classes of drugs beginning each year. I had a gentleman who recently reached out to me and he said, Martha, I looked at the price of a drug I take for next year and I'm paying about $140 every time I pick it up, which he thought was a lot. <laughs> and it looks like this drug is not going to be covered by his existing plan, so it was going to go to over $1,500 per month. So this was a gentleman that definitely need to look into uh, another plan that might cover that drug uh, a little bit uh, less expensive for him. And actually, he was able to find one. So this year, the drug was covered for him at about $140, but he learned that next year, that drug, that same drug, was going to be over uh, $1,500. So he's going to be needing a change of plan to make sure he can get a lower cost. So that's why it's so important to keep up with the changes to Medicare. The Medicare plans change every single year. And again, the Medicare Part D companies, or if you have a Medicare Advantage plan that includes the drugs, every year they can change the drugs that they, they carry and they can also change the costs. So that's why you wanna look at that. Now, P plans usually are required to notify you within 60 days uh, if they're going to stop covering a drug uh, in their uh, plan. And I have had people who receive a letter and the letter clearly states, we will no longer be covering this drug and the person will say, oh, what am I supposed to do? And I said, no problem. You talk to your doctor, you have a couple different options. One option is you can ask the drug company to give you an exception and continue to cover the drug or two, you can talk to your doctor and see if your doctor can exchange that particular medication that will no longer be covered and replace it with one that is covered. 
Sometimes people can't take a particular medication, so the doctor might have to come up with a couple different ones. But in many cases, because these drug plans do offer many drugs within different categories, you may be able to find a lower cost option. But of course, that's something that you'll always have to work with your primary care doctor on or the specialist that may have uh, prescribed that particular medication for you. So it will be time to make an appointment so you can sit and discuss it. Uh, not that long ago, I held a seminar and a doctor actually was at this particular seminar and we were talking about drugs and one of the other folks that wasn't a doctor said to the doctor, how come you folks prescribe medication that is so expensive? And the doctor said plainly, we don't know how much the medications cost, so if we prescribe something to you that is unaffordable, just let us know and we will look for another medication that may be more affordable for you within your prescription drug plan. So many people do not know that sometimes the doctors don't know what the cost of the drug will be that they prescribe to you because there are many different insurance companies, many different drug plans within those, those companies. So they don't keep up to date. But thankfully, the doctors hopefully are keeping up to date with what they need to take really good care of you. But understanding exactly what a medication they prescribe will cost is not one of them. So I was really happy that physician was there because the doctor answered that question much better than I could have because, of course, I'm not a doctor. Uh, also, sometimes drugs are required to be removed from a formulary. Uh, recently, there was a very widely used and very common medication that was pulled off of the market because it was determined that it caused some pretty significant um, uh, health issues. So that, mar that medication was pulled off the market. Anyone that was taking that medication was advised to contact their uh, health care provider, their doctor, immediately to get a replacement and to destroy the remaining medication that they have. So sometimes you have a drug plan and again, a medication that's covered is no longer covered within a plan year and sometimes you learn about it when you're looking at the annual notice of changes for the coming year. Now there's also a couple of other terms that I want to alert you to with respect to Medicare Part D plans. One of them is called prior authorization. Most people have not heard of prior authorization until it hits them. What that means is in order for your doctor uh, you know, to get that medication for you, or I should say in order for you to get that medication, the insurance plan will have to authorize that medication. So if you find out a medication needs prior authorization, that means the insurance company and your doctor have to really talk and also your doctor may have to document why the doctor is prescribing that particular medication. So prior authorization means prior authorization. Your physician will need to get the insurance company to authorize that medical uh, particular prescription. Now sometimes um, there is step therapy and step therapy is another term that many people are very unfamiliar with. It almost sounds like an exercise, you know. <laughs> Let me take some steps to build up my muscles or something. But step therapy is related to you taking one particular uh, medication to see if that will take care of what you need. It's generally a less expensive medication and if that medication doesn't take care of the problem or if you have side effects from that medication, then your doctor may be allowed to prescribe a more expensive medication. So again, many doctors will tell you if you're having an issue, let me know. So then they do sometimes have a little bit of flexibility to do step therapy and then get you on a medication that may be more expensive but will have less side effects. So step therapy is also a very important term to understand. Quantity limits is another one. Many times when people have other you know, insurance, they don't have anything called quantity limits. But with Medicare, there are quantity limits. Um, I know a person actually was a relative, okay, it was my mom. <laughs> my mom, you know, started to sort of misplace her medications and she would go to the pharmacy and I would get a phone call and they would say, oh, your mom already has um, the number of, you know, 
pills she can get for this particular condition and she has to wait. So many times we would have to get an exception <laughs> if we couldn't find it and, uh, and a special exception, exception for her to get a little bit more. But it's very important to know that there are quantity limits related to picking up your medications. So please make sure you don't lose track of your medications because it may take a little bit uh, to get the medication uh, refilled. Also, there are enhanced drug utilization reviews. If you are denied a particular medication uh, from your insurance uh, program, you can appeal and you can do an expedited appeal. Certainly, if it's a life-threatening medication and your insurance company won't cover it, uh, you might be able to get a response within 24 to 48 hours. So that is also available to people. Also brand new, there are opioid uh, safety edits. Um, that's an alert that triggers at a pharmacy if you um, have had prescriptions that exceed a high amount for opioids. Um, there is uh, a lot of concern uh, in the Medicare space that people were abusing certain medications. So there's actually a trigger. So a pharmacy will know if you are picking up too much of a particular medication. I've actually had people you know, call me uh, because they know I answer questions about Medicare and they tell me my pharmacist is not filling the medication. They say there's an alert on my account. So I tell that person it's very important that you and your doctor figure out what is the proper dosage and make sure you're getting what you need because yes, when it comes to opioids, this is brand new, started about a year ago, they will trigger uh, your account at the pharmacy and not let you pick up certain medications. So again, that's a conversation for you and your doctor if you're on those types of medications. If your prescription changes, what are some of the things that you can do? Uh, you can go to the website and see if there have been any changes to the formulary. Remember, that's that list of, of drugs that you take specific to that particular Part D prescription drug company. Uh, you can also call customer service. Uh, you also should give your doctor a copy of the formulary so they can see what drugs are covered and make substitutions if necessary. And again, if a new drug is not on the formulary or midstream during the course of the year, if a drug that is prescribed is not there, make sure you follow the rules to get an exception. Sometimes you can get an exception. The other thing I love doing with people is letting them, them know there are also programs called patient assistance programs. Patient assistance programs. For those programs, you reach out to the pharmaceutical company. When you get a prescription, you can find out who is the manufacturer of this particular prescription. Sometimes they provide assistance even to people with government programs like Medicare, and they can lower the cost of that prescription drug. I bring that up because again, I was recently talking to someone, and this was a gentleman who was prescribed a drug for $2,700 per month. You, you heard me right, $2,700 for a 30-day supply of a medication that he needed. He, he really cannot live without this medication. So this medication was not on the formulary, so contacted his doctor, had the doctor justify this $2,700 medication, and the drug company was very accommodating. They said, rather than $2,700, what about $700? So this gentleman still said he could not afford to pick up this medication for $700 per month. He actually ended up in the hospital because he didn't take it. So his wife got a hold of me and, you know, and I said, okay, I'm going to contact the pharmaceutical company. And we were able to get that medication covered for that gentleman. The doctor still had to write justification and fill out some forms, but the pharmaceutical company decided to fill that gentleman's prescription for zero dollars, zero cents, and he was able to get that, uh, that medication at zero dollars delivered right to his home at no cost. So it's very important to understand when you reach the Medicare years, when you find that medications are expensive, there's a few different ways you can lower the cost. So important to reach out to uh, Medicare, reach out to the insurance company, reach out to your doctor, and then if you need to, reach out to the pharmaceutical company to see what kind of assistance is made available to you. 
been very successful with those. Um, you always want to make sure you do a comprehensive uh, review of your medications each year. Make sure you let the doctor know if that medication is working for you, if you have any side effects. They also always can do substitutions. Uh, also, you want to find out uh, if there are ways to lower the cost of your medication. So if you're on a brand drug, maybe there's a new generic that's come out. Each year, those things can change. If you just do those steps, you'll find out that even during the Medicare years, when you have Medicare prescription drug coverage, even though it may not work exactly like the commercial plan you had under an employer, there's still many, many ways to lower the cost of your prescription drugs. Um, uh, the next thing I wanted to just say, um, one other little program uh, under Medicare that some people are unaware of, it's called Medication Therapy Management. And I have some people who contact me sometimes and, and they tell me, I'm getting phone calls from my Medicare insurance company. Why are they calling me? I said, well, you need to call them back to find out why. But there have been a couple cases where they're calling to enroll you into what's called a, medica a medication therapy management program, MTM. And what that program does is they actually assign someone to you who will call you on a monthly basis if you're taking medications for you know some pretty serious uh, illnesses and they will stay with you and and give you ideas on how to lower the cost of the medications of course they want you to stay compliant that means they want you taking those medications and not sometimes people don't take meds because they can't afford it so these are program uh, people who stay with you to make sure you stay on this medication therapy management program to make sure you don't miss any of these medications which can cause other problems to develop which will be more serious. So I understand that several people have become very good friends uh, with the person that they're assigned to. In many cases, they help them lower the cost of their medications. And these are folks that can help you uh, if you need to get an exception because a drug is no longer covered or reaching out to the pharmaceutical companies to even find out if they're patient assistance programs. So that was the other very important program I wanted to let you know about, medication therapy management. And that is for people who have uh, more than one chronic condition. Uh, many times they take several different medications and their medications have a combined cost of more than $4,255 per year. Now that's not $4,255 a year that you pay directly. Part of that cost may be because you covered by your insurance company because you have co uh, coverage. But when you and the insurance company have paid out that amount of money in a given year, you have you know, a chronic condition and you're taking more than one medication, you may qualify for this medication therapy management program and it's a very, very valuable program. Now I know we covered a lot today <laughs> and I hope that uh, you can retain it all, but in the event that you don't, remember you can reach out to Medicare. You can get more information by going to Medicare's website at medicare.gov. You can also call them at 1-800-MEDICARE. And remember, they're open 24 hours, seven days a week. So if that question comes to mind at three o'clock in the morning, go ahead and give Medicare a call and ask them about uh, Medicare Part D. Also, if you have issues related to enrollment and eligibility for your Medicare, your core Medicare, that you'll need to pick up your Medicare Part D, that's when you contact Social Security. They're not open 24-7, but between the hours of 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., they are there to accommodate you. Once again, I want to thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you listening. I'm so happy I started this Medicare Answers in Minutes, and I have an opportunity to share this educational program with, with you. Aloha.